Turbine rotor is directly coupled to the generator rotor to transfer the mechanical energy produced in the turbine to the generator where it is converted into electrical energy. Now as we progress through this module, we'll be discussing the function of all of these components and many others. At this point, we're mainly concerned with identifying these items. Make sure that you know where the following components are located on your particular turbines. The turbine outer casing, the generator, the turbine rotor, the generator rotor, and the associated coupling. The governor pedestal, the main steam stop valves, the steam chest and associated admission valves or control valves, the location of bearings which support the turbine rotor. Now the particular machine that we've been studying is made up of several cylinders and we'll be looking at other cylinder arrangements in a moment. But first let's take a closer look at a single cylinder machine in order to help us understand the principles of turbine operation, how it actually functions and produces power. As we all know, steam at high pressure and temperature, say 1800 PSIA and 1000 degrees Fahrenheit, is admitted at one end of the turbine. After passing through the turbine, this steam exits at a much lower pressure and temperature, say 50 PSIA, and 250 degrees Fahrenheit for a typical back pressure turbine. However, if the turbine is of the condensing type, and this is far more common, then the steam exiting will be at a pressure far below atmospheric, say 1 PSIA, and at a temperature of about 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Clearly, the amount of energy in the steam exhausted from the turbine is much less than in the steam entering the turbine. The heat energy has been used to force the turbine rotor to rotate at high speed and consequently produce mechanical energy. But how does it do this? Well, the simple answer is that the turbine blade to take advantage of the decrease in steam pressure and consequent increase in the As we know, the heart of the turbine, the bit that makes it work, is the relationship between the fixed and moving blades. The fixed blades guide the steam onto the moving blades. As the steam passes through the moving blades, it causes the disc to which they are attached to rotate, and consequently the shaft rotates. Each pair of stationary and associated moving blades are known as one stage. Most steam turbines contain many stages of blading. In this example of a single cylinder machine shown here, we have seven stages. And do not forget the stationary blade is always ahead of the moving blade. Actually, each pair of stationary blades is shaped to form a convergent, divergent nozzle. However, the form of the nozzle is bent to receive the steam exiting from the previous moving stage and then to turn and redirect the steam onto the next moving stage. Now before you raise the question, but what about impulse and reaction type blading? Let me say that in practice, when you're operating a turbine, it's not vitally important whether the blading is impulse or reaction. This is really a design